Ms. Rose, how would you define a powerful woman? A powerful woman is a woman who leads from within. Um, power is oftentimes mistaken for position or authority or p perhaps wealth. But I believe that power for anyone, whether it's a woman or a man, is really the sense of who you are, um, knowing who you are, and then leading from that place. Um, and when, when you exercise that kind of power, it is received um, in a different way than authoritarian power. Do you consider yourself a powerful woman? Well, I think defined in that way, um, there are um, some qualities that I have really used, a philosophy of life that I use in particular, um, that I think meets that criteria of leading from within. Um, for example, I believe, and I try to say as, as sort of a daily mantra, I am above no one and yet I am beneath no one. And so when you combine I am above no one, but I'm beneath no one, that means that I see that part of you that is like that part of me. And, and it's coming toward another human being with a basic level of respect. Um, when I embrace that philosophy, um, there is a sense when I'm interacting with others that there's an authenticity. Um, and I think from that authenticity comes a sense of personal power. And um, so I think from that definition, I would define myself as a powerful woman. Okay. Above no one, but beneath, beneath no one. Yes. Okay. What do you think makes a better leader or manager, men or women? Well, I think that the question um, is really not men or women but it's men embracing their feminine characteristics that would be traditionally considered to be feminine, um, and women embracing um, more masculine characteristics. And so that men or women come at the job in balance. Um, so I think when you have a man who's out of balance, you'll see all masculine tendencies that um, may be harmful in the managerial role, um, may be insensitive, may be, um, and, and on the co contrary, you might have women who have not possessed some of their masculine qualities and um, are coming at it from too much of a feminine perspective. So I think it's, a, it's the enlightened man and it's the enlightened female that have um, found a balance um, and bringing that to the job. And those are the best managers and leaders. How do you deal with sexism from men that you work with or work for you or that you've worked for? Well, first of all, um, I think it's really important um, with sexism, just as it would be with raci racism, is to not let it go by. Um, if there's a comment that's off offensive, if there's behavior that's offensive, um, that's sexist, um, you need to deal with it. And you need to deal with it with firmness, but not anger. Um, you need to tell the offending party that that particular statement is out of bounds. And you may have to do that over and over and, until uh, the people that you're working with recognize that this behavior is an acceptable behavior. So um, I think that some women might choose to look the other way or to laugh, um, be uncomfortable, uh, shy away from it. Uh, my advice is to confront it head on, but in a way that is unexpected. I think the expected reaction would be fire and anger. And I think if you come at that with sober firmness um, and maybe compassion for their ignorance, um, a little humor sometimes, um, but, um, but firmness, that it's much more effective than, than a reactionary anger. One of the things I like to advise women, take the time um, to put tools in your toolbox that will help you, especially financial tools. I think um, for women who, in the course of their life, one time or another are going to be 
alone, whether it's through divorce or through death um, of their husbands, you're going to have to manage your own finances. So I'm a big advocate having studied business for other women to, um, to know and have confidence about their own financial resources.